Is there anyone who has never dreamed of having mutant superpowers like Wolverine with his healing abilities or Professor X who can read minds, not to mention piano summoning girl? Busendorfer, to me! But what the hell is mutation anyway? The basic biological characteristics of living beings are determined by the genetic code made of DNA inside their cells. If this makes less sense to you than a Mongolian yurt sales contract, please watch this video before continuing with the current one. We all have our own DNA with a unique order of letters, and most of our cells hold a copy of it. The copies contain the letters in exactly the same order throughout the body, making us a beautiful, well-coordinated unit. Should the order of letters differ from cell to cell or from time to time, our organs and tissues wouldn't work the way they are supposed to, if they could work at all, and we would all aesthetically kick the bucket. The permanent change in the order of bases in the DNA is called mutation, and because of the aforementioned reasons, our cells desperately try to prevent it from happening. DNA, like it or not, gets damaged all the time. Have you been tanning? DNA damage. Eating unhealthy? DNA damage. Eating? DNA damage. Chewing on aloe vera while receiving colon irrigation with turmeric-rich amniotic fluid? DNA damage. Many, many physical, chemical or biological effects may damage DNA, like UV light, X-ray, high temperature, free radicals, tobacco smoke, sanitizers, viruses, bacteria, getting hit by a train and even the products of healthy cellular metabolism. It would be a miracle if a molecule so f***ing long and thin always remained intact. The estimated amount of DNA damage falls between 10,000 and 1 million per cell, per day. A few examples include bases transforming or dropping out, or ginormous molecular crap getting attached to them, and even the chains may break. Is this mutant DNA? Nope, it's just f***ed up DNA. But mutation may follow. Inside the cell, we will find many repair enzymes which are most of the time able to fix broken DNA. As a side note, enzymes are molecules which help certain chemical transformations happen. Our bodies are full of various enzymes. If one of the two strands of DNA remains undamaged, the base order of the broken strand can be precisely determined and the damage fully repaired. But sometimes the damage is just too extensive or present in both strands. Or the repair enzyme gets pissed off by the DNA shoving its stinking base in its face a million times a day, not to mention the lack of a proper salary and the right to unionize. So every now and then it happens that the repaired DNA contains different bases than the original one. This is mutant DNA. Cell division plays a major role in the appearance of mutation specifically the part when DNA is duplicated to create a separate copy for each daughter cell. This is the time most repair processes are active and can therefore make mistakes. And of course there is the DNA replicating enzyme which isn't perfect either, and should it swallow one shot too many in the morning it might just make a mistake or two while copying. Especially if it has to work with damaged regions, which that damned repair enzyme didn't bother to fix while dealing with the other 999,999 broken sites simultaneously. In such cases, the replicating enzyme will just go YOLO f**k it and improvise. Thanks to all this, bases may change, or extra letters may get inserted, or existing ones removed. The alteration may affect entire regions, sections may disappear, multiply, become rearranged or turned around. Depending on the magnitude of the mutation, the new code might cease to produce proteins and occasionally might lead to a different protein being produced. Mutation can either leave the cellular functions intact or kill the cell, or sometimes alter its attributes, its behavior and its products. Alright, but how does this affect the entire organism? How am I ever going to mutate into cholesterol-resistant cookie-disintegrating man? Well, you won't. Mutation happens randomly on a cellular level. 
the chances of the billions of cells in your body mutating at the same time in the same DNA section in the same way is zero. So you can stop strategically licking nuclear plants. The body will generally not notice the mutation of individual cells. The extent of it does matter, of course, but let's assume you're not smuggling radioactive fissile material in your pocket and the amount of DNA damage in your body is average. Should a cell here and there die because of a deadly mutation, so what? There are plenty more. It would have kicked the bucket anyway, sooner or later, considering our cells are being replaced all the time. The effect of non-deadly mutations depends on how much they change cellular function and in what sort of cells. Our bodies consist mostly of non-dividing cells. These perform their jobs neatly, and when their time comes, they drop dead in peace while listening to emo music. In their lives, simple DNA damage plays a more important role than does mutation, because, as you can recall, Mutation arises mostly during cell division. Non-dividing cells don't multiply, so even if DNA damage or the occasional mutation make them do all sorts of crazy shit, who gives a damn about the one idiotic cell among millions of normal ones? We do, however, have dividing cells as well. They are the ones producing fresh supply of non-dividing cells. Should dividing cells mutate, their daughter cells will inherit the mutation, thus the change in the genetic code will reproduce. If the mutant daughter cells don't divide any further, we're safe. But if they do, mutant cells that lose their previous functions and uncontrollably divide turn into much-feared tumors. Various types of cancer, leukemia, sarcoma and their cuddly friends. So even though none of us will ever become an X-Man, we can always get cancer. It's not that cool, though. DNA damaging effects such as carcinogenic substances, X-ray and other forms of ionizing radiation are especially dangerous to developing fetuses because they contain a crazy amount of dividing cells which would later on form important tissues and organs. If deadly mutations decimate these starting cells, or if tumors pop up all over the place, the consequences on fetal development can be disastrous. So we have seen that all the cells in the body will never mutate in the same way at the same time. Various cellular mutations may appear here and there, most of the time without any consequences, because they either die or get their asses handed to them by the immune system. These are called somatic mutations. However, we do sometimes label someone or something mutant. Not just their individual cells, but the entire organism. How can that happen? How can Fred, for example, from next door, who smells like fermented underpants all the time, be a mutant? Technical information in this video was fact-checked by Christian Sabo, zoologist genius. Get it? Gene. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> if you've made it this far, why not like, comment or subscribe? Or check out my other videos. I know it would make at least one of us happy. 